Hello, uh, welcome to uh, this tutorial section. Um, I uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, how to determine the when, uh, when forces on the uh, building using the ASC seven um, sixteen. Um, this is the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, standards, and in this. Uh, uh, book that will show you basically you know minimum design loads and associated criteria for buildings and other structures so you have you know like earthquake load uh, wind loads and you know different other uh, uh, design procedures um, so the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm a recent graduate and uh, I had to do this um, in my uh, senior design class because um, I was in the structural team and so I uh, uh, we did a little uh, when low design about in I think structural analysis but you know th then they will the professor or in the test or homework they will only give us you know when loads like okay this is the amount of load when blowing or whatever um, and use that to you know do the structural analysis on the structure uh, but like they then teachers the steps of like how to actually get that amount uh, how, how to actually estimate the the wind load uh, depending on the location the topography factors and you know where the um, you know environmental factors and all that so uh, I'm doing this and if you you know start or try to see how you know they go and get that when load on the structure uh, follow along and uh, uh, I'll show you uh, so here we have different ones uh, as you can see it's chapter 26 it's a general requirement some uh, requirement talking about some requirement uh, the 27 is when load on buildings Main when force uh, resisting system, and this is a directional procedure. So in this one, basically, you are uh, analyzing uh, the wind load based on the direction of the wind, um, and this is the you know envelope procedure uh, here. The other directional procedure, but this one is for uh, the wind load on building appurtenances. And other structures um, and also you have components and cladding um, so the main wind force resistance resisting system that's a, a, a different way of you know, getting the result and also you can use component cladding to also get the result as well um, and you also have like wind tunnels uh, wind tunnel procedure so today I'm gonna be talking about this one, the chapter 27, and then if you would like to also know how to do, you know, the 28 and 29 and all that, uh, come back and check out my next videos, and uh, um, I'll I'll post a few videos, you know, in the next uh, weeks, and uh, uh, you can you know you can watch those and follow along. All right, so let's go ahead and start this. Um, I've uh, made a little Excel sheet. Um, this is the building we're going to determine the wind loads that are on the surfaces of the building, uh, of the walls and roof. So uh, you'll need a few information, you know, like the, uh, the height of the building. Um, and as we go, you'll see, um, you'll see that you know what these uh, letters mean actually um, so uh, roof angle all that um, I kind of use the roof angle just to like determine I mean determine that H value so we'll talk about it when we get there and also you know the location uh, the environmental um, um, factors like the topography factors are there hills, flat terrain, trees around, all that? Um, so you need those, and uh, you see how these one, this information will come 
uh, come in handy when we uh, start you know doing the process okay so let's go ahead and uh, do that uh, what's the chapter 27 is on page 273 so 273 here and as you can see also um, one reminder uh, this is not you know probably like this building I'm using here is maybe different from your building uh, you want to design so just make sure you read the scope because uh, there are you know conditions and limitations here so make sure you read these and uh, you know make sure that actually fits your design and uh, before you actually copy this exactly what I'm doing so don't do that um, you can you know read and see where okay what other information I need or I uh, you know the procedure is still the same but you probably need to you know based off your design get different uh, numbers than what I'm gonna get right now uh, in this one in this example so just keep that in mind um all right so step one it says um and you know that's for the note actually you say use part one of chapter 27 to determine wind pressure on the when men when when force resisting system of enclosed partially enclosed or open buildings with any general plan shape you know building height or roof geometry that matches the figures provided these provisions use the traditional all heights method directional procedure by calculating when when pressures using specific when pressure equations applicable to each building surface all right so you know so yeah that's what i you know make sure you know you read these and you know uh, make sure your uh, your design falls into these categories all right so as we can see in our building this is an enclosed building um because you know house everything will pretty much be closed uh the windows you know if it's glass windows there is a you know section that talks about it like if you are in a zone with a lot of you know wind debris like when a lot of wind with like debris that can break the window um and all that sometimes they say oh you you know even though you have windows glass windows there make sure you uh stated that that those windows are um open and not closed so it would be kind of like either partially open or open you no know, building so but in our case this will be an enclosed building so let's go ahead and uh, uh start um here are the steps there are seven steps to you know get the the results um so we'll be going through all those steps uh one by one to uh get those uh, values all right step one says determine the risk category of the building and he also actually see, uh, shows you the reference right see it says c table 1.5-1 uh, right table 1.5-1 uh that will probably will be at the beginning so let's go to uh say page one maybe uh, okay table 1.3 table 1.33 yeah here we are so table 1.5-1 uh, risk category so category one is a building and other structure that represent low risk to human life and uh, this is a uh, you know family dwelling so if it falls well you know it will probably be high risk you know to their lives so and then on the category two says all buildings and other structures except those listed in risk category one three and four so basically you have to read the other ones to make to be you know to know you know if yours falls into this one um but i already read this you can go ahead and do that um and you know determine that my building falls into category two so i'm gonna go ahead and put that there Great too. 
now let's go ahead and determine the basic when speed all right so basic when speed let's go back to the thing and now our chapter is 273 so basic when spring is determine the basic when speed v for the applicable risk category right so and it says c figures 26.5-1 and 26.2 uh, 0.5-2 so let's let's go look for those 26 so that means chapter 26 so it's right before this one so if we go a little bit uh check the figures uh, all right no not there 26.5 uh, dash 2 all right but this one is category four. So we're looking for category two. That's why it's important to know which category your building falls into, right? So let's keep going. Oh. So basic one speed for risk category four buildings. Ah, let's keep going. Keep going. Yeah, category two, but this is I think that's Alaska State, right? That's Alaska. So we don't, our building is in Mobile, Alabama. So let's go down. Yeah, category two. And Mobile is right here on this little area. Uh, I don't know if you can see the mouse pointing there, uh, right there. So, you know, and closer to this one. So if we follow this line down here, it's 150. Right, 150 miles per hour. That's the highest wind speed that mobile gets. So 150 miles per hour. Right. So that's our wind speed. Now let's go ahead and see what what's the other the next step. Alright. So the next step we have say determine the wind load parameters. And the first one is when directional factor KD. C section 26.6 and table 26.6-1. So we go back again to that chapter 26. So section 26.6. Yeah. So here's 26.6. 26.6 says the when directional factor KD shall be determined from Table 26.6-1 and shall be included in the when load calculated in chapter 27 and uh, 230, right? So uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, see table 26-1. Ah, right there. Table 26-1. We have structure type, we have building. We don't have arch or you know or any of these. So well, men when force resisting system that one correspond to 0.85, right? So let's go ahead and write that there. That's our KD, it's, uh, 0.85. Um, and then the next one, the next one is exposure category, right? And it, that's in section 26.7. So basically go back to the same page. 26.7 exposure category. So it says for each wind direction considered, the upwind exposure so shall be based on ground surface roughness. That is determined from natural topography, vegetation, and uh, constructed facilities, right? So that's why, you know, I said, it's important to know where your building is lo located. You know, if he has a lot of uh, houses, tall buildings around, trees, you know, hills, all that, um, you can use those to determine the exposure category. Okay, so that based on ground surface roughness, roughness, right? Okay, so, you know, reading these, you know, we can see that surface roughness B means urban and suburban areas, wooded areas, or other terrains with numerous closely spaced obstructions that have 
the size of single family dwellings or larger, right? And we are in the uh, midtown area, you know, in our uh, design, we're in midtown area, fairly flat terrain and trees in the surroundings. So um, our exposure category is B, you know, just like uh, the thing said here. Well, the sur that surface roughness first, okay. Surface roughness is B, right? Now let's go here in the ex exposure category. Exposure B for surround buildings of or other structures with a mean roof height less than or equal to 30. Exposure B shall apply where the ground surface roughness as defined by surface roughness B prevails in the upwind direction for a distance greater than 1500 feet, right? So that basically describes what our building is. So our exposure here is exposure B. So because if you read the other one, like open terrain with scattered obstruction, uh, that's not a flat and obstructed area and water surfaces. No, that's not it. So our exposure is B, in fact. Now let's go ahead and check the next step we got the exposure um, now topographic factor kzt say c section 26.8 so basically you know we go into the same page and moving forward panda uh 26.8 topographic factors and it says when speed up over hills ridges and escarpment well we don't have hills and ridges or all that you know so if you scroll down scroll down read 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 so the thing is if you're new to this make sure you are very patient and read basically that section and you might find some information that will really help you um yeah so because if you want to go just like you know really fast you know skip over things you'll be lost so yeah, you know, you might end up not uh, finding the the the, the uh, values you're looking for, right? We don't have that. We don't have hills, so we can't really use any of those. Uh, now let's go sit down here. Uh, all right, the topographic factor. All right, so if site conditions and locations of buildings and other structures do not meet all the conditions specified in section 26.8.1, then KZT equal zero, I mean one, right? So we don't have hills, we don't have hills and ridges, all that, right? So our KZT is one. Now ground elevation factor, KE, uh, where would that be? I think I saw it somewhere, right here. Ground elevation factor, KE. Uh, then that's the in the steps. Uh, that's the, in the steps too. So the ground elevation, elevation factor to adjust for air density, KE shall be determined in accordance with table 26.9-1. And it also says it is permitted to take KE equal to one for all elevations. So I'm not gonna bother, you know, even doing anything. I'm gonna take one. So one here. Now the gust effect. All right, so these, these are here are in the procedure I just copied so we can, you know, move faster. So it's the same procedure. Um, as in the ASE manual. So the next one is the gas effect factor. Uh, I might have to go back and check because I don't know which where the reference it's referenced. So ground uh, yeah, we got that gas effect factor G or GF C section 26.11. All right, so it's around uh, section 26.11 okay right here all right so so it says the gas effect factor the gas effect factor for a rigid building or other structures is permitted to be taken as 0 
85. Okay, so yeah, right there. Uh, let's go at 0.85. Right, um, enclosure classification. Right, enclosure class classification. Let's check our procedure. Enclosure classification C section 26.12. So it will be twenty six point twelve. Uh, go down more. All oh, right here. So for the purpose of determining internal pressure coefficient, all buildings shall be classified as enclosed, partially enclosed, partially open, or open as defined in section twenty six point two. Right. So. You know, if you read on these, 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 you know, like I said, you know, with the wind, wind debris region, you know, all that. So, you know, just make sure you read all these. Um, and, you know, as I read, I found out that my, uh, the section 26.2, right? Uh, what that will be. Oh, it's like right, right up before uh, all these, so um and my building is what enclosed um if i go back more maybe 250 that's four that's three 26.2 right that's copy building open building low rise building Okay, building enclosed. A building that has the total area of openings in each wall that receives posi positive external pressure less than or equal to four square feet, right? Or one percent of the area of that wall, whichever is smaller, right? So you know, make sure you read all that the, the, those references and uh, you know, so to determine that. So. I'll, mine is what uh, enclosed uh, enclosure category is enclosed enclosed all right now internal pressure coefficient GCPI right let's go ahead and enclosed building right so you write that um let's go to the procedure uh, the set the, set, the next one is what internal procedure coefficient gcpi and c section 26.13 and table 26.13-1 uh, 26.13 here and then our pressure coefficient gcpi shall be determined from the table 26-1 and then 26.13-1 based on building enclosure right that's why you have to know that enclosure you know classification determined from section uh 26.12 so let's go to table 26.12-1 uh, well all right right here so our building is enclosed right so since it's enclosed the internal pressure is what moderate and the, the coefficient GCP, GCPI is positive 0.18 and negative 0.18. The positive sign means when word, you know, uh, coefficient. I mean GCPI. But the negative means leeward uh, lee or, you know, side walls. It's like going away, negative pressure, basically. All right? Positive pressure, negative pressure. So... Uh, a positive value of G applied to all internal services or a negative value applied to all internal services. Uh, plus and minus signs signify uh, pressures acting towards and away, okay, yeah, away from the internal surfaces respectively. So, you know, also make sure you read these, you know, it's important that you actually get all the necessary uh, informations you need to. Plus or minus 0.18, that's our GCPI. All right, so I just put positive 0.18 and negative 
0.18. So, so we have that there. Now, velocity pressure coefficient kz or kh, right? Now let's go ahead and see our uh, next thing here. And uh, now velocity pressure coefficient kz or kh. See table 26, 10 dash 1. 26, 10 dash 1, right? Right here. All right, so um, we will do, we'll be using the kz, right? So rz is what, 25. So if our Z is 25 and our exposure is B, then our KZ or KH is what? 0.66. Now that little one there is noted down here somewhere. Yeah, I use that in chapter 28 for exposure B. Uh, we are in that chapter 27, so we'll be using 0.66. All right, so let's go ahead and put that here. That's our KZ. Now, uh, velocity pressure QZ or QH, right? So let's go check this out. Uh, procedure. We determine that, okay, determine the pressure, uh, velocity pressure with equation 26 dot 10 dash one. 26 dash, I mean dot 10 dash one. So equation we're looking for uh, 26 that and uh, what is it ah right here so this one is for uh imperial and uh si um so the qz right there that you have it that you know see why we determine all those factors because they're all included in this equation here so We'll go ahead and calculate QZ. And it says the velocity pressure at mean roof height is computed as QH equals QZ evaluated from equation, uh, that same equation using KZ at mean roof height H, right? So that's why I also have that H there because you have Z and H. So mean H is mean roof height. That means, you know, you have that Z, which is the height of the building until that point. And then, remember, there is a little, you know, angle, the, the roof is angled here. So there's still a little, you know, uh, measurement right there um, that you can calculate using tangent of the angle with like, you know, uh, our L is B. This is the L, L side, and this is the B side, right? So... Uh, if you divide that, the I mean the roof. If the roof is our roof is actually um, at fifteen, you know, in the middle of the uh, of this uh, side here. So that means you have fifteen as the adjacent side of the triangle you get here. So fifteen, and you have the tangent. So tangent of this angle, which is fifteen, tangent of fifteen equals to what the opposite, which is that little. Uh, measurement there over the 15 and you can you know solve the equation and uh, find that value and when you calculate it if you calculate it so that will be uh 15 times tangent of 15 you get 4.019 so we'll just say four and so mean roof height is actually that divided by two plus the Z. So that's why we have 10, 27 there. All right. So we have 27 there. Um, and so our QZ here, when we calculate these, we'll make sure we do, we calculate QZ and QH because at some point we'll need both of them. So let's do QZ. Um, uh, and 
then here the QH So there you have it, right? So we'll do QZ here and QH here using these two different values. All right, and also we have the you know uh, equation right here. I'm gonna do a little snip and cut that to put it in my uh, in the in the file there. that based yeah okay. so so that's our formula right there so let's go ahead and and that's why I like to use Excel because now I can just click and and go so it's point zero zero twenty five six times KZ where is our KZ KZ is here times uh, KZT, KZT is 1, times KD, KD is 0.85, um, times KE, KE is 1, and times what? A V squared, IV is 150 MPH, so that squared, and okay right there right so we have that and this is what says mile per hour so it's still mph all right so we have that there and what what would be our um kh right KH is basically the same thing, um, but when we get into the other uh, calculations, we'll see how to how how why we we'll need uh, that those you know, two different values um, and uh, and compute that KH. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do I uh, mean get these next ones. So we calculated what is it? A QZ or KH? Okay, yeah, we already calculated that. Now, uh, determine external pressure coefficient CP or CN, right? Uh, CP or CN. Now, uh, which one? You know, all these are different categories of you know types of building. For ours, we have like what four walls, four walls and flat, flat gable hip monoslope or mensa roofs. So our roof is hip. I mean gable, right? So let's click on that to register. Um, so it takes us to this table here, but um, uh, if you go here, see how I say that's the our L, L there and B there, and that's the Z. So the Z is basically bottom to like that edge of the roof, and the H goes to the main roof height, right? So. Um, that's the you know gable heap, gable or heap roof. Please, all right. So it's basically you using this same uh, um, you using uh, these uh, different formulas here to calculate the ones on the on these walls. It's the same formula like leeward. Uh, and side walls, it's the same formula. Uh, when word you use that Z, but here you use QH, so you know we'll have to calculate that QH thing. Um, and here on these roofs as well, you know, they have different formulas, so 
let's go ahead and give them one the uh, uh, CP first. So it says external policy uh, coefficient um, CP or CN, right? All right, so if we do uh, one word, let's say we're getting CP one word wall, right? CP on one word wall will get what? As the pressure is there, when word L over B, all values, if you do L over B, whatever value you get doesn't matter. So let's do L over B here, let's see what that gets us. And that would be equal to L, what, what is our L over B? It's 0.75, right? 0.75. So, but here it doesn't matter with one word, it doesn't matter all values, but your CP is point, point 0.8, right? It's point 0.8. And you use that with QZ. So, right here, point 0.8. Now, you have leeward, right? Leeward and sidewall, right? So let's go ahead and do that. The word side. Wall. All right. So the word, what would it be? The word, if you are between zero and one, ours is what point seventy five. The L over B. So we fall into these. So our CP will be negative point five. So negative 0.5, right? And sidewall, sidewall, all values. So that also is what uh, negative 0.7, negative 0.7. All right. So that's the you know walls. And uh, we also need to find the what the roofs, right? The roof. So we have the angle here for when direction. This is normal to reach and when word, right? When word. If you look here, our uh, when is coming that way, you know. So everything is basically yeah. When word, you get um. Still with QH, but that is you know when word that's the when word because when is coming that way, uh, and then you know leave all uh, word over there. So uh, let's see when word uh, angle fifteen, right, and then uh, H over L, and we have to do H over L. So let's calculate H over L. And that would be equal to H, where is our H27 over L, 30, it's 0.9, right? H over L is 0.9. So we're not less than 0.25. We are basically kind of in between these two, you know? Uh, so how to get, if we are in between these two, we can interpolate. If we interpolate, um, you know, do the calculate the slope and uh, use that slope to get whatever that point nine is. Um, I won't do that here because that's like a math problem. Yeah, if you interpolate, you get a point like point ninety four. I think yeah, point ninety four. So um, it's pretty close to one, you know, but. I mean, why not get the actual uh, value? So you can use one, but um, you, it's also good to interpolate. So um, if you read down here, they say values, you know, are provided for interpolation purposes or 
you can also interpolate to you know, get the value so squared. So it will be what 0 0.994, I think, for the roof. Roof. Roof when word. And also make sure because even you know on the walls the when word values are positive but on the roof it's you know negative um, you know most of the times because uh, you have like when pressing on the roof and also going away um, like the one you see here see that's why you have two you know arrows pointing in different directions so the, going on it and something something coming up so um, so be careful and our is here will fall into the negative one yes like right between these so all right um so that means it's point 0.90 negative point 0.94 and then leeward leeward will have that's our leeward leeward 15 you know well there aren't that many uh this is like yeah if we interpolate it would probably be point zero i mean zero point five something you know so i i just went ahead and used uh negative Point six, so you can interpolate and find it, but I just use this. Um, so yeah, we have all the surfaces, the CP for all the surfaces we needed. So, um, now we are ready to calculate the wind pressure on each building surface, right? So uh, let's see, two seventy three. Says uh, calculate wind pressure on each uh, building surface using these equations 27.3 1. All right, right here. So 27.3 1 right there, and uh, we have different you know information. So here we have what Q Q equal Q Z for windward wall evaluated at height Z above uh, ground level, and then Q H for leeward wall side walls and roof evaluated at height H. Right Q I Q I is equal to Q H for windward walls side walls uh, leeward walls and roof of enclosed buildings right so um and then that also can be qz for you know positive internal pressure pressure and all that so let's go ahead and uh, use this formula here um, i'm just gonna copy that and put it right there Okay, so that's our formula, right? We have Q, right? So we have Q. Let's see if we need to calculate anything else. Um, what is the internal pressure in GCPI? Um, GCP. Um, mm, mm, mm. So, I calculate um, QZ point zero zero KZ KZT KZ or KH point sixty six. I see velocity exposure. Did I get? 
gauge. Let's see if I got the gauge. Okay, so we need to also calculate um KH. I mean, get KH uh, to get, calculate that QH. Um, if you check here, we have QZ and Q. You know, QH. We get. We'll use QH in the for the calculation of like leeward wall, side walls, and and on the roof. So we need that. Um, uh, we need that KH uh, right there. So, um, let's go ahead and get KH. Uh, not yet. Maybe, yeah, let me move these down a little. Uh, uh, So move these down right there okay okay so um we'll have kh here uh kh so if you go back to this table where we got kz from because kh needs to be calculated at min roof height right and our min roof is 27 so if you plug in you know the 27 here it's like between 25 and 30 so go ahead and interpolate between that with the exposure d interpolate between 0.66 and uh, 0.7 uh, when I did it I got 0.67.6 I mean 0.676 so uh, that 0.676 that's our cage right so if we have kh we can also calculate qh right using that same formula but instead of using kz we use kh with the, the rest of it right so basically i'm just gonna copy this copy that and paste it here and then change the value of uh, that it's I-12, right? So instead of I-12, it'll be I-13. See how, why I like Excel? You can go, just go ahead and you know, do that there. So that's the my value for um, for the QH, right? For QH. So once I have that, I can easily go ahead and you know apply this formula here. Uh, so calculate when pressure P on each building surface, right? So just like we did here, we're going to do the same thing. So when ward walls, uh, let's do this. All right, and then copy that and base right here right okay so once we have that um when word says use p equal to q gcp minus qi and gcpi um and in our um in our formula here you know it says qi can be qh or qz right we already have gcpi all we need to do is use kz i mean qz and qh in this year and we're good to go right so let's go ahead and do that so when word uh when word is positive um positive uh uh cp coefficient right so that's our when word wall uh, cp there but we're using what qz right so equals to uh, here is qz so equals qz times and qi also is qz 
right? So you can basically go ahead and put in this in parentheses, but just for tutorial purposes, I'll just do the same thing. Um, write the same thing over. So QZ times G, right? Is that G? We didn't use that earlier, now we're using it. Times CP. So one word, CP for one word. That minus UI, which is, you know, that QZ again, times GCPI. We already got that, which is, and when we're, remember, positive. From the, if you don't remember, go back to the table and you'll see it. And press equal. That's it. And you basically do the same thing for, um, for this. But this time, Lee wall, remember, we're using QH, you know. Lee wall, we're using QH. So, it'd be QH times G. G is the same thing, times CP. And now, the CP of Lee wall is that minus QI, which is, you know, the same QH again, times GCPI. So, GCPI there. Press equal. And the negative sign doesn't mean it's false. That means it's um, it's negative pressure uh, inside. So on the wall, it'll be pulling away or something like that. You know, if you have your reference axis. Um, so that is still correct. Uh, so don't be... Uh, Let's start with the sign there. So sidewall, same QH again. So it will be equal QH 33 times G is 85 times CP. Now uh, sidewall, CP is that. Minus, you know, same thing times GCPI. Right, is that GCPI right there? Wait, uh, Lee word, uh, it's a negative one. So, so there's that there, J, and we get this. Let me see if I use. Uh, oh, yeah, one mistake. That should be J eleven. Uh, yeah, it should be negative. Shouldn't be positive. So. The leeward side wall, all that is the negative one. So, so yeah, that seems correct. All right, now for the roof, we still use all you know QH. Remember, so um, let's go ahead and you know do the same thing for the roof. So you know QH is that thirteen times G, which is that times. CP, CP for the roof, one word, get this, and then, um, minus, that, same 33 times GCPI, or not GCPI, and roof is still, what, negative pressure, so, you have that there, and, okay, uh, same thing here that times G times CP for the roof B word minus Q I I mean QH times GCPI that you have so you know these are your results um, I may have messed up somewhere, but uh, I think I should be uh, that should be correct if I didn't. And so the the thing with Excel also is you know uh, instead of probably clicking on the you know the 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 other cell, you click on the wrong one, and you know the results get messed up. But if you follow that equation with the instructions with roof, you use the negative uh, uh, co pressure coefficients, the CP, negative CP, negative, you know, you, you get the right results. And then with the when word, it's the positive one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
just in a few minutes. I mean, in a few seconds. Okay, so here, you know, I say QZ, positive internal pressure, right? QH, when word, walls, side walls, lee wall walls, and roof of enclosed building, right? So make sure everything you use, even if my, my results, are, you know, I may have clicked on the wrong ones, but make sure, you know, you get those right. So, um, all right. So that's basically it. You know, you have the pressures here and these are what pressure. Uh, let's see the, uh, the thing. Spawn per square feet, right? PSI. And now once you have these, you can use it to, let's say when word, if this, this wall here is our when word, then we know the when on this wall will be 16.16 .16, uh, PSI. So, you know, if we, we are designing that wall, and you know, based on the space spacing of the wall studs, um, and all that, you know, we can. Be, it's pretty much kind of analyze a little bit, like uh, you know, if you're doing a a uh, um, um, how do you uh, a uh, slab? Yeah, uh, if you if you're analyzing a slab to like. So the studs here will be kind of like a beam, and then the wall surface kind of like the slab surface. So depending on the spacing, you know, you know how big each stud needs to be, or you know, all that. So, but the most, I mean, the point of this video is to get the when, uh, when the when when loads. So here you have it. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and like it. Um, and if you have any question, please don't for, uh, forget to post it in the comments. I'll be glad to answer, I mean, a, a answer any requests. Um, even if you have problems with like statics and, you know, structure analysis or whatever, you know, post it in the comment. I will, uh, if I can help, I will help. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you.